underline all the SI base units. So you need to know which are your base SI units. Um, there's only going to be Ampere and Kelvin. There are some imposters here. Current is a quantity. That's the name of the quantity. Ampere is the unit. We want the unit, not the quantity. So, don't lah. Newton, you can break it down. Coulombs, you can also break it down. Okay. Next. So, we have this equation. Toy car moves in a horizontal straight line. You got this. S equals to V squared 2A. A is acceleration and V is the final velocity. State two conditions that apply to the motion of the car for the equation to be valid. Okay, this is one of what we call the Stuva equation. And the original form of it is your V square U square 2AS. But as you notice, there's no U in the equation. So maybe you want to talk about that first. U is the initial speed, right? So you want to say that there's no initial speed. It's at rest. So let's add there. Initial speed is zero because there's no u in the equation then another thing is very importantly when you see this a this is for linear motion which means you can have acceleration but it has to be constant in the same uh, direction so you can also say that as oops wrong color that the magnitude of acceleration must be constant acceleration constant okay if it's 9.81 it's 9.81 don't start changing halfway otherwise you can't use your stuva okay let's go on here we go to some uncertainty question now so experiment is performed to determine the acceleration and we got these measurements calculate the acceleration so they give us the equation you stay calm press calculator okay let's uh let's rearrange a bit shall we a equals to v square over 2s so that's our friend there okay let's plug it in so acceleration is 2.75 square times 2 of s this one is bonus mark press calculator you should be able to get the answer okay and it's 0 0.972 now final answer in the mask schemes usually they will put 2sf you can put more than two so i will say two to three sf in fact for this question if i were a student i would put three because you see ah uh, the value they give is three sf then the other value is also three sf might as well i put three just in case right all right so next once you find the value they will ask you for the uncertainty let's find the uncertainty okay go back to the equation just now this one there is a error in v there's also an error in s but you cannot just add them together because there's two times of v now when the rule is when let's say v and s if they are multiplied or divided together you can add their percentage but with a special rule so when you find the percentage uncertainty in A, you need two times the percentage uncertainty in V because it's square and uncertainty in S. So they already found for us. So that's great. So 2, 0 0.8. And then for S, hey, sorry, 2V, oh, S is 0 0.5 up here. So we just add 0 0.5. Nice. This should give us about 2.1%. So just write it, 2.1. This one, there is no strict rule for SF, but generally if keeping your one decimal place or two SF is a safe bet. Okay, there is two marks. One is for final mark. One is for adding together. Don't forget, there's a square. So power two must be multiplied because there's two times of B. Alright, next. So, use your answers to determine the absolute uncertainty in the calculated value of A. Means, just now, we said, what was our uncertainty? Okay, let me rewrite it. Our acceleration was about 0 
and we had the uncertainty of plus minus one, uh, plus minus 2.1. So you want to find the absolute uncertainty, means it must have a unit of meters per second, and that's correct, see here? Okay, so what is 2.1% of 0 0.97? Let's find that out. So 2.1 over 100. Okay, so this one you should get a super long number, 0 0.02037. We don't need so many, just keep it to 1 SF. That's the general convention for absolute uncertainty. It is special. Now, if they ask you to write the final answer, you can have that sometimes. Plus, minus, they'll leave a blank like this. First step, you run up to two S, uh, 1 SF and you write 0 0.02. Second step, you make sure your value matches the same decimal place. So, if this is two decimal place, you follow and you also round this off to two decimal place. So, this is step two. Step one will be this one. Make sure your uncertainty is in one SF. Okay, but yeah, that's all for this intro question.